I was in sermon prep for our Sermon on the Mount series a couple of weeks back, and I was preparing to preach at one of our campuses. And this really important, pivotal question came up in sermon prep, and it was this, can we actually trust what the scripture is saying? So in this passage, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus essentially says, do not worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, or what you're going to wear, because your heavenly father knows that you need these things. So seek first the kingdom and all of these things will be added to you. It says it right here. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added to you. So it kind of sounds like there's, there's this formula. If I just put God's kingdom first and I make sure that I'm pursuing God's kingdom, then he will give me all that I need, and I simply will not lack. And the great question came up in sermon prep, what about those that that's not true for? What about those that are faithfully seeking God's kingdom? Are they just not seeking God's kingdom enough? Do they not just have enough faith? How do we reconcile what Jesus says here in scripture with the actual lived experience of his disciples? Well, here's a really important principle. Anytime there seems to be a contradiction between what scripture says and what our experience is, the first thing that you have to ask is, what does the rest of scripture say? Because we need to interpret scripture in a way that fits together. So here's the truth. Paul, someone who absolutely was seeking first the kingdom of God, in 2 Corinthians, he writes this letter to the Corinthians and he lists all of these struggles that he's had as a follower of Jesus. And among them, he lists being hungry, he lists being thirsty, and he lists being naked. So literally all of these things that Jesus says, seek first the kingdom and all these things will be given to you. Here's an example of someone who is seeking first the kingdom and yet had lack in these areas. What do you do with that? Well, we have to interpret scripture in a way that actually pulls together everything that God says in scripture. And let me tell you this, there is a clear theme in the Sermon on the Mount and all throughout the prophets in the Old Testament of a concept called the here but not yet kingdom. Let me explain. God's kingdom is here. A new chapter of salvation history has come. And all of the promises that were promised in that new kingdom, some of them we have begun to receive. For example, we have received forgiveness of sins. We have received the Holy Spirit who is a deposit for our faith. Some of us, we have received physical healing. Some of us, we have received the peace and the prosperity and the lack of hunger and the lack of thirst and the being cared for that is promised in the kingdom. And some of us, this side of heaven, we are experiencing the not yet part of the here but not yet kingdom. And that is that not all of us have received physical healing yet. Not all of us have received peace yet. We are part of the here but not yet kingdom. And this side of heaven, this side of God's kingdom coming down to earth, we get to receive some of the benefits of the kingdom of God, but some of us, we will not get to receive all of those benefits until we one day get to experience God's kingdom come to earth in its fullness. But don't despair because the point of this passage, which Jesus is trying to make, is that God is a better provider than you and I are. When we run after food, when we run after drink, when we try to clothe our bodies, what ends up happening is we get the lesser things, but we miss out on the greater things. So what Jesus is saying is seek first the kingdom of God and God who is an excellent provider will give you the greater things. And yes, he will take care of those lesser things. You may have very real lack in your life. It's not because of something that you've done wrong. It's not because you're not seeking first the kingdom enough. It is simply because you still live in a broken and fallen world and you are waiting for the fullness of the kingdom of God. Don't despair, wait in hope, and above all, seek first the kingdom and trust God to provide what you need. I hope that encourages you.